Have you ever wanted to add something to your footage that was not real, but you wanted it to look real and not like some green screen footage you found off the internet? Well, I am not at all professional, but I can show you how. <laughs> Maybe. Alright, so there are two different ways you can achieve this. The first one is that you just have your camera on a tripod and not moving at all. Second one being you're holding the camera. Now I'm going to show you how to do the holding camera one since the tripod one's way too easy honestly because you're just aligning the digital camera with the 3D object and stuff. So first thing you want to do is, well, film your footage. You want to keep it as steady as possible so you don't get a lot of motion blur because then when the computer's motion tracking it has no idea what it's doing at all. And after you get your footage, the thing you want to do next is get a 360 image of the area for later. Now, you can use a 360 camera, or if you don't have that, you can use Google Street View, which is what I'll be doing because I don't have a 360 camera. And you'll see why you want a 360 image of the area later. Now, it may look like complete garbage, but it's still gonna work in the end. So first you want to open up a Blender file, and then go up here, Go to VFX and click on motion tracking to make sure your frame rate is correct and format is correct. Then open up your file. Once you got this, set the scene frames and then click prefetch. It'll take a little bit, but once it's done, you can start adding markers. And this is why you wanted to film something with like a lot of dots and different sort of things so you can track it. Like all these markings on this rug will work, and all this stuff on the shelves will also work. Oh, and I'm able to scale the markers by pressing S and dragging. And one thing I learned though is that you don't want to make the markers too big because then it gets really laggy when you actually try motion tracking, so yeah. Try and avoid that. And once you think you have enough markers, first you want to see what chunk of footage you actually want to motion track. And when you get to the spot you want to, so I put the frame right there. And now, make sure you're at wherever you put the markers on because if you go forward then they're in a different spot. So then you start tracking. And as you can see right down here, it's doing stuff. And now it's done. As you can see, some of them got messed up. You don't need those, so you can just delete them. And after you do that, you can go to Solve, click Keyframe and Tripod, then select Focal Link K1, K2, don't ask me what that is because I don't know, then click Solve Camera, and then you typically want to get a solve error under one, as you can see right here. So what you can do is click Info, and delete the ones with the highest errors, like that. So I mean, you generally want to get under one for solve error, but sometimes it's fine. open it and if you go here look there it is the background's there i think it's a bit too bright though so you can darker or brighter just like that now the next step is to actually give it a shadow so what you want to do is add a plane by clicking shift a going over mesh and clicking plane you want to go to um, Object Preferences, uh, Visibility, and click Shadow Catcher. One more thing is that you want to go to Film and click Transparent, and now it's casting a shadow on the floor. The shadow may not match, but that's okay because when you're rendering it, you can render the cube and the shadow separately, and then like you can put the two together and then make the shadow like more transparent. And yeah, that's basically it. But obviously you do not have to use just a cube, you can use anything you want, like a circle. And maybe even this. Don't know what's on screen right now because I haven't done it yet, but yeah. That's how you add a 3D object to your footage. Yeah, now you know.